Fala, Cabra the Cap Podcast. We back at you. We got some exclusive. Go ahead and introduce yourself to him. Hello, my name is Helena Jones. I am the owner of Beauty Babes Beauty Bar. Um, that's me. First, before I start, I would like to thank you uh, and the sister of Phenomenal underscore Braider for Great. donating, for, uh, 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 for uh, sponsoring Captain Care Podcast, for sending us those tablets. I let everybody know that once we got to a thousand, we were going to send out uh, one, but we might send out two because we got to a thousand fast. Correct. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Now, uh, first question I have, because uh, you've been to prison, correct? Correct. Okay. What was you uh, arrested for? I was arrested for conspiracy to distribute 50 grams or more crack cocaine base. And I was also sentenced. I was also, um, I had a second charge of occupying a dwelling to sell illegal substances. And how much time did you do? Uh, I did 120 months. Um, I started with 188 month sentence, which is 15 years, eight months. But when the crack law came, the one to one ratio between powder and crack disparity, they ended up giving me 121, 120 months, which is 10 years in the feds. Oh, okay, I remember that. So, so, um, so how, how, how was it? How, how was it? Uh, how was it for you to transition? And to getting prepared for society um the transition was easy for me because people think as soon as you get out of jail that's the transition but the transition starts the day you walk into those prison doors um if people you know because every you know jail is jail prison is prison but if you go in thinking oh i'm gonna figure it out as soon as i get out it's not gonna work you have to start the day you walk into those prison doors about what you're gonna do when you get out so i took all the classes I took everything, anything they was offering, I was getting it. Okay. So how was it leaving from prison to the halfway house? So leaving from prison to the halfway house, it was sort of interesting for me because at the time I ended up, they had started giving out extra halfway house at that time. And that was in like 2014. So normally when you do, you know, over 120 months or over five years, they give you six months in the halfway house. Well, I was blessed to get nine months in the halfway house. And that's what happened. My family basically said that I couldn't come there. So my counselor was like, well, we're going to give you extra time. And they gave me nine months in the halfway house. So, and you know, and you know, um, right after you left, they started giving people a year halfway house. Right. Some of the people got a year, um, but I didn't want a year. I ended up getting the nine months and it helped me. I never left the halfway house. A lot of people want to go home on home confinement to just be with their family. But I stayed in there the whole nine months. So I stacked my money the whole nine months. I worked from seven o'clock at night. I was basically just slept there. Okay, got a little te technical. Okay, you back? You shook back? Okay, that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> okay, now, uh, how does it feel starting over? You know, coming from uh, being incarcerated. Starting over for me was different because I didn't have anything. I just had me, and I had three kids before I left. So from having everything before I left to coming home to having nothing was like, what am I supposed to do? What am I going to do? Like I had to start over on the bus. I had to catch the bus um, to get from work, to get to any programs that I had to do until I built myself up to get a car or whatever I had to do. So it was, it was challenging for me, but I knew what I had to do. So that's what I did. I got on the bus. I, whatever, whoever I could, you know, get a ride from, that's what I did. Um, but I was really good at the halfway house. My halfway house was really good to me. They were. All right. Before I ask you this question, um, first of all, I want you all to hit the like button. Please subscribe to Cabin Cap Podcast. Also subscribe to her uh, YouTube channel. I have it posted right here, Beauty Babes TV. That's her uh, YouTube channel. 
Let them, matter of fact, let them know all your Insta, all your handles you have. Um, so I have Instagram at beautybabes20 underscore soap queen. That's on Instagram. My TikTok is soap queen002. They took my first TikTok. Sad for TikTok, but yeah, my new handle on TikTok is soap queen002. And I think that's all I have right now. It's TikTok and Instagram. All right, shout out to Southside Elite. Thank you for your donation. Okay, um, this is a this is a very important question here that I want to know. So, how was it when you reunited with your children? Because you mentioned you had three. When I reunited with my children, it was I left them when they were nine, one, and two. So when I got back to them, they were 17, 10, and eleven. And for my oldest son. The transition for me leaving was harder because he knew what it was like for me to be his mom. Um, the other two, they were so little that, you know, you can't really remember at one and two. You know, they can only go from visitation and I was their mom. So it was what my son, it was just like a sigh of relief. Like, because all the things that he had, you know, that was building up that he didn't have or was falling short in his life. He knew once I came home, that was going to be fixed um, for my um, 10 and 11 year old, it was an adjustment because they were used to other people raising them. So for me to come home and try to implement what I had to do or what I felt like they needed to have, it was sort of, you know, difficult for us. But praise God, it worked. My daughter is, um, she graduated from school. My my son, you know, he's he's the tough one, but it's working out for in his favor now. But it was a it was a transition for us. Okay, that's good. We got a strong black woman in the house, y'all. Please support I came home hit the ground running. I was doing my son was 17 with no telephone in 2014. He had nothing, no shoes. Like, you know, he had you know basic stuff, but from what he was used to, it wasn't like that no more. He used to always tell his friends, When my mama come home, when my mama come home, I'm telling you it's gonna be different. And it's been different ever since. Ever since I hit the ground running doing what I had to do for my kids. Okay, I want you all please hit the like buttons. Please subscribe to her YouTube channel. It's Beauty Babes TV. It's posted right here. So please subscribe to her. You're hearing the story right now. You know, she ain't get out with her hand out begging. Um, I did this is a question I want to ask you too, because I, I see you got it together. So uh, what, 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 what led you to start your own business and want to be your own boss? Um, I work two jobs. I work uh, as a breakfast attendant for one um, hotel when I got out. And then I also work for Frito-Lay. And when I was incarcerated, when I was in prison, I ran Unicor. I ran the compound. I ran Unicor. I was in Coleman for like six years. Nothing could move on the compound without me. You know, you couldn't get no job or anything. So I already had leadership skills from, you know, being in that environment. Um, so when I got out and got the job at the uh, hotel, I, I went to get a housekeeping job. As soon as I was, I was doing housekeeping for like a week. And they was like, no, you ain't doing housekeeping. We need you in front of people's face. We need you in the customer's face. So they end up making me the breakfast attendant. So I had to deal with all the, you know, customers coming in. So when I worked, when I started working at the Frito-Lay, I worked two jobs for like three months. And I, I went up, I ran into ranks there. So all the skills that I had, like the SAP program, everything that was working for me in Unicor, it was really helping me on the street because a lot of those people didn't know how to, you know, utilize those systems. And I did. And it's like, wait a minute. She just got out of prison. How she know how to work these things. Mm -hmm. So I utilized everything that I did in jail, everything I was going through in prison. I utilized it on the street and I ranked up there. I started making $16 an hour coming in, coming from the street. Like who, who just gets out and start making $16 an hour. I wasn't even out of year. And then I, I ran up and ranked in that job. And then I got pregnant and I couldn't work that job anymore because it was a warehouse job. <laughs> like it was picking, like the tater chip shipping everything out. So I was shipping. I was a receiving clerk. I was doing all of that. Then I got pregnant and I couldn't do anything because now I got this big old belly in front of me and I can't really run, you know, like I should. And I said, I got to do something. I got to do something. What am I going to do? What am I going to do? So I had my baby. I was a stay at home mom for like a year and a half, almost two years. And I was like, I got to do something. And I was like, what do I like to do? And I started making body butter, soaps, sugar scrubs, 
and it just took off for me from there. Like I put it, you know, I, I studied it, I mastered it. Um, those are skills I had from a little girl, like making soap, making stuff like that. And, you know, YouTube give you everything, anything you want to learn how to do, go on YouTube, anything you want to figure out YouTube. And that's how I started making it. Shout out to Pooh Black. Thank you for your donation. I see you Southside Elite. Uh, please subscribe to her Instagram channel. I mean, her, uh, what you call it? The YouTube channel is uh, Beauty Babes TV. Uh, you see, we got a strong black woman come from prison. She didn't have her hands out. She got right on it. You know, entrepreneur. Uh, okay, well, hold up. So, uh, okay, this is a good one here. How do you balance mom and your entrepreneurship? How do you balance those two? So, with the older kids, it's easier because, you know, they're doing their own thing. But when it comes to my baby, he's so spoiled that he only knows me. So everywhere I go, he go. Ain't no, ain't no hustle. Ain't no, because I got a baby and I can't maneuver. If I got to go deliver something, pack something, ship something, he going to be either on my feet, in the car, getting out, going to the mailbox, whatever. He already know when the package is going out, he know how to, you know, you make him the helper. He know how to put the packages in there, scan them already. So he just watching his mama do something that he can later on do it himself. Like, okay, I'm watching my mama do this. I know how to do this already. Hey, excuse me. The reason why I'm looking this way because I got a nut in my office making all this noise <laughs> when I'm interviewing. You want to get out, man? You keep running around dragging that stuff. I'm trying to interview right now. Yo, anyway, that's why I need help. I need you all to come here because people forget when you're doing stuff. You know, right? Cold nuts, man. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, this is a good one right here. Any advice on being free? How can we stay free? The one advice on how to stay free is to not be connected to what sent you to prison in the beginning. I don't go in now neighborhood. I used to serve drugs in. I don't go to now place. People can't even say, oh, I seen her from where I used to hang out at. Because guess what? People going to remember what you used to do, not what you're trying to do. I ain't, I'm not, it's nothing behind me that I need to remember or none of that. None of that matters to me. I don't even go nowhere near the areas I used to sell drugs at. Won't ride through them, none of that. Because it's easy to get caught up in a lifestyle like that. When you're used to being able to have anything you want, telling people what to do, because it wasn't like uh, I was just, I was somebody boss in, you know what I'm saying? So I have people that I'm telling them what to do figure out you need to do this you need to move this we need to go over here and do this you need to do this so when i i know that people looking for still looking for something because those people sit in the same position they was in before i left i missed eight summers how y'all still doing the same thing and i don't surpass y'all being out so i just don't go back to what i what i know what i used to i don't hang with those people i don't associate myself with those people nothing nothing that's that's a best advice course. <laughs> that's the best advice say. I can give you is hey, yeah. don't go back to what you used to. You say now. You know, trigger that song. <laughs> I don't <laughs> now live about that you in Florida. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, this will here's a good one here too. The environment, the environment of being incarcerated for women. So for, for for women in prison, I went to four. Wait, I went to four prisons. You know, the feds ship you everywhere. So I went to Tallahassee, I went to Coleman, I went to Danbury, Connecticut, and I went to Alabama. And each environment is exactly the same. Um, you're gonna have drama. You're gonna have the you're gonna have the holy rollers. I'm gonna just give it to you how it is enough. You're gonna have the people that's always with drama. You're gonna have the holy rollers. You're gonna have the hustlers. And you're going to have lazy people, basically. And for me, it was to not really get into what everybody else had going on. Like, you know, we all hung out. We all did the same thing. But you have it's consistency. So you're doing the same thing every single day. You're getting up, going to work, coming back, going to commissary, going to child, coming back to the unit. So if, once you get in the routine and you're doing something, you're going to continue to do it. But if you over here trying to mix over here, trying to mix over here, you're going to end up in trouble and drama and something. So basically, that's how we were. And then you have like clicks. It's clicks enough. Like 
you and somebody that you click with, y'all gonna always be together. I have friends that I was incarcerated with for six, seven, eight years, and we always were together. Once you've seen one of us, you've seen another one of us. And those people tend to keep you out of trouble. Now you just gonna have girlfriends and then you're gonna have all that kind of drama in there because women are creatures of emotion. <laughs> And that's when the fights really happen. When they feel like somebody trying them or somebody going through this or somebody doing this, and you're gonna have relationships, all that kind of stuff in there. It, it's it's just like that. So have you ever been in a gang fight? Have you had a fight while you was in prison? Uh, no, I never really had to fight in jail because, like I said, I ran a compound. So most people had to come to me for bed movements, jobs. I, I did the TV schedule, so I was one of the people that was utilized by a lot of people, even the counselors. I have counselors on my social medias that was like, we knew you was going to be bigger than what you was because how you was in there. Like, so no, I ain't never really had to fight. I did have to like, yeah, I might have had to swing on somebody a couple of times, but they never really, you know what I'm saying? They never really figured it out that it was so. Me. So did anybody ever try to start you? Or drop oh. you kind of oh, listen. So in female prisons, that don't happen. Okay. How it is it what the men in female prison ain't nobody getting extorted in there. Ain't no bullies in there. Ain't no everybody doing their own thing. Now you was gonna have a girlfriend or somebody that like you that might try to put snacks on your bed. <laughs> <laughs> or that might try to leave food on your bed. And if you take that food, you that girlfriend. But that really happened with like studs, like women that look like men, or if you're an aggressive fan. Like I done had women do that to me, like won't like put snacks on my bed and I was like, like you can't I don't need no commissary so if you broke in jail that's how they end up getting those type of women if you don't have like a lot of money coming in so when most women who don't most studs who go to jail are always broke for some reason okay. Okay. Now, <laughs> they need yeah, the okay. girlfriend to take care of oh, okay <laughs> now here's a, here's an interesting question I have for you because I need some advice on this one right. so explain to me how you don't let your past interfere with your future. Um, so the first thing was, I thought that my charters was going to stop me from getting certain type of jobs and being in certain, certain type of environments. But when I worked at Frito-Lay, the lady told me, when I run your background, it shows absolutely nothing. So, you know, after seven years of being incarcerated, you start over, basically. So you don't have that charge anymore. And you know, in the feds, they don't just bring charges. You got to like dig deep to find those charges. Um, so that was one thing. I knew that the charge that I had didn't stop me from doing the things that I needed to do for myself. Also, I took, I just never went back. I never went back to the environment that sent me to jail. Like same, some of the same guys that work for me still trying to find things to do. Um, my a child, he was like a child of me that set me up. Um, he's still doing the exact same thing. So why would I need to go talk to him? Because he don't have no direction because I was giving him direction before I left. So it's basically just don't go, don't go backwards. Just don't go back. Just don't go back to what led you to go into prison. I'm never gonna go back to say I want to do this. Oh, I wanna, I wanna like I never want to see my, you know connects as we called them back then i never want to see none of those people because what can you do for me i work you know i i, I you I, you gave me your product i sold it like i paid for I, what i'm not in the same thing so what you want to buy some soap you you want to buy some body <laughs> that's the only thing we can do is you want to buy some soap you want to buy some body butters because there's nothing else we're going to be able to communicate with and World. tell them how tell everybody just coming on how can they find your product and how can they find you in um, general? You can find me on Instagram at beautybabes20 underscore soap queen. You can find me on TikTok at soap queen002. You can also go to my website at beautybabes body bar beautybabes20.com. Um, so yeah, you can find me on what is this? Uh, YouTube. YouTube at beautybabes TV. Okay, you can look me up watch. on Google. You can look up Beauty Babes on Google. I'll pop up. All of that. So you got any shout outs before we go? Um, I don't got really no minute. 
I don't got no, I don't have only shout outs. I'm gonna do with the people that be with me. Um, you know, I'm gonna shout out Magic Man 89, Brian Irvin. I'm gonna shout out Phenomenal Breda. I'm gonna shout out Blaze Styles, which is my cousins and my sister in law. That's what I'm gonna shout out because that's who's been in my corner since I've been out. And these people ain't even my family. These people that I, they were, they like my in laws, but they treat me like I'm, they, I'm their sister. I'm their cousin. So, oh, that's yeah. love, yeah. So, so the circle small. The you circle stand is small. Focused. Stay focused. Be you have your business going. Have your business going. You gotta Legally. have a plan. Legally, you gotta have a plan. You. That's why I tell people all the time. Rehabilitation does not start the day you get out. It starts the day you go in there. So you got a program. You got to figure out how you're gonna get out of these things. Figure out anything. So if you go to jail and you go to prison or whatever get into the program and, and that will help you stay out of jail okay you That's all right. make sure you subscribe to her channel beauty babes tv subscribe to that um, yes my stories time. my stories are up um they all on tiktok but they're also going to be on beauty babes tv so y'all can look up i done told every single thing about myself i can't say about other people because my co-defendants a lot of them still in jail um, but I could tell y'all anything about me. Anything y'all want to ask, it's I'm an open book. There y'all have it firsthand. Mm -hmm. So you yes. mean to tell me you was a woman that went to prison for crack, mm -hmm. did mm -hmm. your time, mm -hmm. came home, mm -hmm. uh, you didn't look for a man to pay the bills, man to take care of you. You just didn't rely on y'all this much. People that go to the halfway house, they tend to get in a relationship with the people that's in the halfway house, right? I went in the halfway house making the people believe that I was gay. So none of the dudes would try me. That's how focused I was. So if you think I'm gay, you ain't even going to like me. You ain't going to flirt with me. You ain't going to try me. Well, not so really. Because I'm the opposite. If I know a woman that now she don't have that rough look and she got she, I'm like, okay, I want a girl that like girls. Listen, they told me that I was crazy. They used to say that I was crazy because I didn't want to go home. Because I like the girl, like, so in their mind, I was un, like, she ain't finna go. They used to have, like, battle. she ain't finna go, man. That girl like girls. She ain't, man. She institutionalized. That's what they used to call me. I was institutionalized, right? But I was the one that stayed free and they went back. Uh, how long <laughs> you been free now? Um, eight years. I got, eight out of, years. I got out of September 2014. So you telling me you ain't meet no man in the halfway house? I did meet a man in the halfway house. <laughs> I'm about to see so listen, I did meet a man in the halfway house, and we are together right now. Okay, but listen, before what? we go, give us we kept my, my we kept about our business. How much money? How much money you gave you that first time? Your first <laughs> listen for my birthday, which is in January, y'all. He gave me thirteen dollars to buy me something to eat, and he was in the halfway house too. He was in the halfway house too. I didn't even know who he was for like a whole month and a half. I got there September. He got there in December. And my birthday was in January. And he gave me $13. But he was doing an investigation on me, though. He ain't going to tell y'all that. He was he was piling. He was he was getting everything he needed to get on me before he even came and said something to me. And he so he in the halfway house. So for a man to come to you, a beautiful woman, and say, look, he, it's all I have. He go 13. Because you would think a person would give you 100, 200. It wasn't even the money. Because... Okay, this is a secret. Women gonna be mad at me. I'm sorry, y'all, but I gotta tell it. Most women are looking for security in a man. So a lot of us date men that we don't care how they look. We just care about how much money they had. And that's for me because I was the type of girl. If you ain't had no money, you couldn't talk to me. Like that's just what it was for me. But with him, it didn't even matter about the money because guess what? We were together. So it was no. He got more money than me. I got more money than him. We started off with nothing we both started off with you know what i'm saying nothing he did a long time i did a long time so it wasn't gonna be oh i did this for you because me and bring that up oh i'm only with him for money i was with him because i liked him okay that's cool yeah, yeah. make sure you all subscribe hit that like button um as promised uh, i gotta come up with a way i gotta get this one this the lady right here you all gotta think her and phenomenal underscore braided. <laughs> who, 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 uh, 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 what you call that word? They with the podcast, y'all. Uh, what you call that? They, huh? What's we donated the tablets? Yeah, to us for the give this out. 
Listen, right. y'all, she helped us out and, and she doing her own thing, you know? Sponsor. Yeah, they the one sponsor. Y'all the one sent right. us the, uh, the, 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 the tablets to give to the people. And we say once we get to a thousand, I thought it was going to be by Friday. That happened today. That happened from last night to the day. That thing was jumping. So right. uh, we got to, yeah, we got to get a tablet out. Uh, That's what's uh, up. So, you know, I thank you all for that. Uh, please support uh, Beauty Babes TV. Subscribe to her channel, you all, because she show love. So y'all know she showed me love, but y'all going to get, y'all got, she got some soap. Hey, yo, so this soap you made, wh how you come up with this idea? Because I know we're supposed to be getting off it, but how did you come up with this idea to, to make this soap? Um, I came up with the idea because my daughter had horrible skin and she it was she was just so sensitive to so many different products. So I was like, I got to make something to make her skin better and clearer and not break out so much. She had eczema, everything. The doctor was giving us all this medicine and none. Of, it was just taking it away temporarily, but it wasn't clearing it up. So now she walks around with no um, infections in her skin, no flare-ups, no anything because of my soap. And so I have helped so many different people um, with the soap, with the body butters, with the sugar scrubs. I've done so many different things helping people because I don't want to just give a product just to buy it. I want to give you an experience. So when you feel that, you're going to be like, dang, this does make me feel better. It does make me feel, my skin feel cleaner. You know, because a lot of soap have products that you know, people don't know what it is. If I can't read it, I don't want to use it. If I can't say it out, if I can't understand what I'm putting on my skin, why am I putting it on there? And a lot of people don't understand that. So is the soap expensive? No, it's not. It's seven dollars. Seven dollars a bar. Um, but every single ingredient, you can read it, you know exactly what it is, you can look it up. It's all natural. So it's not anything that's gonna say, uh this 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 so our logo is let our vegan bubbles wash away all your skin troubles wow i like that so i got another <laughs> i got a big big question of the day so you know i gotta i appreciate you all mm -hmm. sending the, uh them tablets and everything but why you ain't sipping ball so you know i just got a jet you don't know if i could bathe or what. Listen. I, need to, I need to make sure that stuff right because i want to promote this product so i need I, to I will, listen i will send you some tomorrow i will pack it up and send it i got orders to pack up tonight and I will send it to you tomorrow. Yeah, I need to bathe with this. I need to make sure this stuff is authentic, what you say. <laughs> then oh, I can yeah. get back on and say, yeah, y'all, I bathe. This stuff is good. Right. I have yeah. had I have had some influencers. I have some influencers, some of my products, and they love them. Um, they have fallen in love with them, and they still order for me today. I was open. My business was open for like three months, and I was already in a magazine. Wow. And I started the business during the pandemic. Okay, so you got out on a mission. I got out on a mission. That's good. So you know, yep. you know, right now, because it's, it's, it's lots of people that's going to watch this. So mm -hmm. you're going to be able to. How do you feel that you're going to be able to influence a lot of women? Um, that's what I'm. I know that's what I'm made to do. I'm made to help people. I'm made to help women, anybody, not just women, men too, because a lot of men don't have no direction either. Um, on my last TikTok that they took from me. I had so many women like coming at me, asking me questions or, or just being a girlfriend of a, you know, of somebody that's in jail. Cause I, he was in jail before me, you know, just giving directions of what not to do, what to do. Like it's different things that people don't tell you. It's so much money that the government get from people that don't know. Everybody want to go out and get an attorney. You know what I'm saying? But why would you get an attorney in a conspiracy? They got to give somebody a private attorney. I didn't know that. I spent hundreds and thousands of dollars to still get 188 months in jail. And I could have just wow. went with one of their attorneys. Like, it's a lot of different questions, a lot of different things. You know, I give hope to people that's getting out that don't know what to do. Like, okay. you can do it no matter what it is or what you can do it. So do the smoke, do the soap smell good? They got a smell to yes. it? All of them have a smell. Every what single one of them have a smell. But it is bars that don't have a smell because some people don't can't use, you know, certain smells. But all, of my, all of my fragrances are... Um, are essential oils or soap made scents so they are like all natural nothing is in them it just makes the bar smell better make sure you all subscribe to beauty babes tv instagram you know she's doing something positive and she's going to influence a lot of people because you know for a woman you know a lot of women get out you know and, and with the looks and just be like you know what i did all this time time for one even minute go and take care of me nah. and we got a mission even before, nah, I wasn't. I wasn't looking for nobody to take care of me. I struggle with that right now. 
Right now, I still yeah. struggle with somebody, you know, because and I have a great partner and he does everything for me. But it's still like you still want to be able to do something for yourself. It's not about what nobody else got. It's about what you have. So he, so in the 13 dollar days old with him, come back. Oh, baby. listen. It done been it done been six figures by now. <laughs> okay, well, I'm trying to run it up there. Yeah, it done added up to six figures by now. Okay, yeah. that's what I'm talking about, man. Okay, it didn't uh, even matter. one more one more thing now. Um, so we go we we got to go now because we got a few other things we got to do. Right. Um, give them all your Instagram, all your handles again, because people be coming in and out. Right. My Instagram handle is Beauty Babes Twenty Underscore Soap Queen. My TikTok is Soap Queen 2 You can also find me on Google under Beauty Babes 20 and I will pop up automatically. I will be the first person you put that in. I'm there. So you can find me on Beauty Babes TV on YouTube. Y'all subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. And my stories are going to be uploaded um, to how I ended up getting the time during the time and after like i said of how i got out so y'all can follow me on all those outlets so you have a lot of prison you have some prison stories on i have your channel. Cool. yeah i have like tons of prison stories okay I'm not, i wasn't just dealing with going to prison i was dealing with a narcissistic domestic violence situation into you know so it's like a whole bunch that led me up to going to prison um so yeah it's a whole it's a whole lot it's a. I went viral off of my story. I heard about that. And I'm going to look at some more, and I'm gonna be in there uh, trolling. If I don't like some of these stories, let you know I'm gonna be in there. Leaving. Shout oh. out to those thick gang lows. I see you, boy. Uh, nah, but I'm always make sure I support. Uh, whenever Correct. you want to come back on, uh, we, sure come back. Fact, we gotta come back on and show that soap. I will, soap. and then I'm gonna send it to you, and then I'll talk about it. Yeah, we gotta come. Yeah, we gotta get that going. I have this ready to go. No, I don't have. I have shampoo bars. I don't have shampoo. I so it's the same thing. You just take the bar and rub it in your head. All right. What about uh, socks and tennis shoes? You got? I get that. No, I don't got no socks oh, and tennis shoes. All right. I got to tell y'all. All right, man. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for. All right. Uh, Thank y'all. Y'all subscribe. Go follow. Do all those good things. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, hold on. Let me get out. Don't say nothing yet because I'll be messing up. I got to make sure we get backstage because they be still listening.